had a pretty eventful morning. Not the way that you draw it up. More mayhem! There he is, boys! This is why I love spring turkey hunting. <laughs> May 2nd found us in Pennsylvania for opening day of turkey. I was going to be running the camera, Preston was going to be on the calls, and his close friend Mike was going to be there as the shooter. We were looking to find Mike's first bird. That's literally exactly what the bird called it. Like, right there. That's unbelievable. I don't think I've ever had that happen. No gobbles and smoke. It might be in the fucking tree. We came into our first spot with high hopes. The morning before, Preston had been out listening for gobbling and had roosted multiple birds on the ridge in front of us. He left shortly before flydown. We also came back the night before this opening day and tried to roost. We heard one bird somewhat distantly, but we were hoping that there would be more birds gobbling in the morning. Unfortunately, we heard a shot just as gobbling light was starting exactly where we had roosted that bird. And we decided to move on to spot number two. And if you feeling about it, because like he really sounded like he was just gonna drop in right exactly where we already were standing. And we were like, man, that was, nah, I doubt he does. You know what I mean? Like, nah, he wouldn't do that. And the, because the property's, I mean, literally where that gun went off is the guy's where he said he was gonna go ask. Yeah. And, ha and that was exactly where that turkey gobbled. They had to be set up on a, look at all the deer sprinting across the top. We are now, we're now working our third spot of the day. First spot, we had one put to bed last night. Not as close as Preston had them on a Friday morning, but like without even a gobble, we heard a shot exactly where that bird was roosted. We went to the second spot, there was already a truck there, and we spooked a couple, um, unfortunately. And then we heard some birds strike up again and we heard like three shots immediately afterwards so it could have been the other truck that was in there that got a shot so moved on to our third spot now and it's about 9 a.m so we're hoping that we can catch a gobbler that's starting to get a little lonely but we're out here working this ridge top I already seen some good turkey sign. So it's just a matter of getting one that wants to play. We came into our third spot, which was a pretty piece of property that Mike has access to. We started to work the property, worked a ridge line, found some good sign, and as we came towards one of the edges of the property, came across this gas line. Preston eased up and pulled up the glass and noticed a tom and a hen, and we were coming up with a plan to see what we could do to make him work for us. She's a... Oh, what's that? 
She's ignoring the shit out of him. No, he knows where she's at. That's exactly what he's, what he's doing now is making noise. Because she's probably already bred. She's going to leave soon. He's trying to find another way well, to come find him. Got it. in nature. The gobblers don't ever go to the female. The females come to them. That's why they just sit there and gobble. Got it. But he's beautiful. What's that? He's beautiful. He's huge. We got set up on this gobbler and in good position, but unfortunately, he wasn't really interested in our calls. It seems like the hen drug him off into the woods, and even though we circled up above their position, we never really got him to answer us or come back to our calls to give Mike a chance at this bird. And you watch riding in my car in four wheel drive, and you watch my dad out in front of you, come around corners like that with his truck weighing so much less. Sunday morning found us headed to him. Ohio early for a chance at a spring bird. We were headed to a public piece where Preston had multiple birds in front of his gun last spring. Unfortunately, he couldn't get the camera on them and the gun at the same time and had to pass. His good friend BK joined us and he was on a bird early and we were working to get Preston a shot. We had split up in the early morning light to try to find some birds on the roost. Preston heard one that gobbled only a few times, but BK found a bird that was really hot. Unfortunately, when he dropped down to the ground, the gobbling activity really cut down, but we had seen him just below us in a little opening, and we tried to get him to come to our calls. Unfortunately, the bird was being more than a little difficult and worked away from us over the course of the next couple hours. Even though we gave him a little chase, he never turned around or gave us a chance. Over the course of the next few hours after giving up on that first bird we saw, we worked a ridgeline calling, calling, trying to get an answer with none. As we were making our way out, we glanced over at a field edge and caught a tom out in the open with two hens. We decided to come up with a plan to get into a position where he could hear our calls and hopefully come to us. That Tom's as content as can be. His head's almost gray. And it's not even, he's not even really red. Well, I think we have one crack at this. Caught that little golly and make them have to come around this corner. I don't think he's gonna gobble either. It's gonna either he's gonna show up or he's not. I have, if you want to try it, I have the turkey fan. If you crawled up to the edge and did this, it's up to you. It's just an idea. I'm not saying you need to do it. I could probably hold my head behind it and look. I could probably watch. He just seems so content in his head. No joke size tracks right here. You're, you're way high enough to see him. We managed to get into a position where this bird was maybe about 150 yards away and we believed that he could hear our calls. Well, it was a little bit windy. 
Preston crept up to the edge and flashed this Tom with a small Jake fake fan that I keep in my pack. The Tom turned when he saw this fan and started to break towards us. Unfortunately, there was a hunter on the far edge who busted these birds as they were coming in on us. It is, what is it, one o'clock? It's about one o'clock. One o'clock. We just got screwed over on a bird. We had somebody sneak in on us. And then we had one at like 60 yards. I, the other guy's not his fault. I would have never guessed no, we were back here. No, no, no. He didn't know we were there. We saw, but it still sucked. And we saw a strutter out in the field pull up a guy pulled in five seconds in front of us. Only car we we've seen. So Only guy we've seen. We're running around blowing hoot owls at one o'clock in the afternoon. Which people think this is nuts to do and always don't understand it. And I locate more birds doing this in the middle of the day. Lots of lot of wind. So we had a bird here this morning too. He only gobbled twice though and then shut up. It's a lot of wind. Maybe a little of a mile or something. Look at the size of those coyote shits. Good lord. Those are huge. Unfortunately, this was not going to be our day. Despite locating that bird that answered to a locate call midday, we got onto his side and he shut up and did not make another sound. This same bird, Preston believes, pulled the same trick on him in the same spot a week ago. And he's still working him out and I'm pretty sure he's going to get back after him and figure this bird out before the season is over. Monday morning found us in one of Preston's favorite places to hunt and working birds as soon as we turned into the parking lot. Unfortunately, the first few that we heard worked off and weren't interested in our calls or setup. As we began to pick up the decoy, we looked across several fields and found a gobbler that was in full strut and seemingly interested in our calls. You see us running here to get into position. Unfortunately, we couldn't pull him into us and we decided to work up the ridge. After working up and maybe busting that gobbler we saw in the field where we met him on a dirt road, we saw a strutter on a pipeline and Preston was going to use the fanning technique to begin to pull in this bird.
This Tom was definitely giving us the slow play, but we knew it'd be a really difficult job to pull him off of what looked like seven or eight hens. On multiple occasions, Preston crept up to the rise and used the Jake fan that I have to try to flash this bird to get him to break towards us. Eventually, we saw him working our way and crossing a couple different ditches and headed towards us in what we were hoping was going to be a chance at a shot. Jakes with them. They all just flew and I could see their beard, bright red heads all right there. Talking about working for a bird. <laughs> all the Jakes were right here and they flew up in these trees and those trees, big bright red heads. Dude! I, would, I didn't want to let them work any longer. I hope you had him on film. Oh, it was the greatest shot angle you'll ever see. So, I was gonna let him come to that. Did you see him not like it? Did you see him come through the woods? He came right down the gas line. I was trying to talk to you. I, I heard you say he I was like, he's in the woods, he's in the woods. He was coming down this gas line. And he telescoped and he saw the decoy right there. And he cut through right here. And then he stopped and froze. He's, he's in the woods. I'm sorry. You don't have your headphones in? I don't want to try. Oh, I was going, Jack, he's coming through the woods, he's coming through the woods. So I kept, I figured you were watching left of me. I must have worked right when you started. Dude. <laughs> I was like trying to tell you, I'm like, he's coming from the left, coming from the left. I could have dusted him right there. I, I heard you say that, but I didn't see you swing your gun. I couldn't. I know, because you, I, I, you, you didn't answer me. I'm like, you must not be able to see it. Dude. <laughs> Holy shit. He's a pretty bird. He's real pretty. Oh, uh-uh. Uh-uh, buddy. <laughs> Look how pretty his head is, man. Ooh. Dude, he didn't wiggle. Winchester XR6 is, yeah. he didn't budge. Honestly, you know what my big fear was? 
kind of like not sure if you were ready or not and sort of rushing it because he was so the pattern's so tight that close. I was like, I don't got much much room to miss. Almost thirty yards. Yeah. That was perfect. The setup was unbelievable. Look at that. You wouldn't see us in a million years in those shadows. It's absolutely perfect. I had every, I had it perfect in focus. All down, I kept seeing though was you moving your hands and I was like, if this isn't in focus, this camera's going no, in a ditch. It was ditch. good. It was perfect. He was literally See the dead stump on the edge of the gas line? Yeah. Right, he was right there, full fan. And then I stood on that log and he saw that fan wiggle and he dropped and he drummed right over to here and then blew up again right there, which was when weird. Did you cut back up into the woods. I did you see him from there? Fuck yeah. That's why I said I was like, I would have smoked him with my gun. He was right there. And then he went back up and I heard it when he dropped his things, I ran to you. And then he must have circled. I don't know if he didn't see the decoys or he, you know what it probably was? Me calling up in the woods. I was calling back behind you, it would have been there, the and he probably went, I'm going to go check it out, but he saw the decoy right here. You didn't see him in the woods yet, he saw that, and he dropped, dropped and telescoped, and he cut straight through here, right on that little path, and then popped out. I was like, oh my god. I thought he was going to run from the decoy, I was almost going to swing on him. He turned, he pivoted away from it, but then he blew up and spun back to him, and I was like, okay. It looked like he dropped like I'm like I wasn't sure because he turned back this way. But when I walked up here with the tail fan, did you see me like almost freeze? Yeah. Because I stood up, I'm like, he was right there, full blown. But I couldn't see any other birds and all the other ones were back on the gas line still. Way back at the washout? Yeah. Yeah, when I ran up here and shot him, they were on the washout. And then the jakes were in this ditch with him. Dude, this ditch is weird too. They were almost, like, I don't walk through this one. I go around it. He had to have jumped or flown that, because that one's not great either. Yeah. It's a long way to work a bird on two ditches. With no gobbles, two. That's, I mean, that's 300 yards. I'll bet you. We could onyx, run it on onyx, I'm on my phone. I'll bet you it's close to 300. To the washout? Yeah. It looks, when I was getting in there, I was like, oh, that's like 140 yards. Yeah. But, but the distance traveled, Mm-hmm. I found real. Talk about working one. Talk about three days, dude. We were like so close. That was, our eighth, that was our eighth bird today. Eighth bird today. Yeah. None of them would gobble though. Mm. We only got to hear like five gobbles today. Mm. That decoy though was like the sole killer for him, for sure. Once he saw that, he up there on that skid road, that was it. He was like, I'm coming. Now granted, in hardwoods, how many times have I told you I have 50-50, I've gotten hunts totally ruined. On that Jake time decoys. there, not just solely Jake, usually I got hens. Yeah. That there though, that was the visual acuity of me moving that, yeah. 100%. When I was up there, I don't know if you got that on film, with me moving that Jake around or anything, did you get any of that? Bit, yeah. There's no, that 100% broke him. He went from that, ditch, ditch, and he just, every time he'd see it, and then you could hear that, that I called a Jake cobble, it probably kind of sounds like one to them. It doesn't sound good. He did not like it. Every time I did that and then I'd yelp, he'd come closer. It's like, it's only the second time I've ever tried it on a bird. <laughs> Let's go. Get on the board again. Is that good? Hook them. He's, that's nice bears. Yeah. 